The Nickel Boys is a 2019 novel by American novelist Colson Whitehead. It is based on the real story of the Dozier School, a reform school in Florida that operated for 111 years and had its history exposed by a university's investigation. It was named one of Time's best books of the decade. It is the follow-up to Whitehead's 2016 novel The Underground Railroad, which was highly acclaimed. You can see my summary of that book linked on top of the video. Elwood Curtis lives in New York City. As a teenager, he went to the Nickel Academy, a reform school that's being torn down. In a newspaper article he reads about a secret graveyard that has been uncovered on the property, and this makes him see he needs to go back and tell his story. The year is 1962, and a teenage Elwood Curtis grows up in Tallahassee, Florida. He gets a record album filled with speeches by Martin Luther King Jr. The speeches teach him about the civil rights movement and they help develop his thinking in a more profound way. Since his parents left, Harriet, his strict grandmother has been raising him. When school is out, he goes to the Richmond Hotel where Harriet works, and he waits in the kitchen for her. One day he's challenged by the kitchen staff into a dish-drying competition for the prize of a set of encyclopedias who have been left behind by a guest of the hotel. He wins, and he struggles to bring the books home with him, only to discover that only one of the volumes has any text in it, the others being a collection of blank pages. He feels hurt, since the staff took advantage of him, and he stops going to the hotel. He starts working at a local grocery store, Marconi's Tobacco and Cigars. He reads the magazines for sale there and his knowledge of the civil rights movement grows. He's a bright young man, and his grandmother and Mr. Marconi start worrying that his high morals will get him in trouble. When he tells on some boys shoplifting candy, Mr. Marconi doesn't like it, and the boys have their revenge by giving him a beating after school. When Mr. Hill, a teacher, arrives at his high school, he spurs his thirst for knowledge about civil rights. He picks books that Elwood can read, sees him at a local demonstration, and even ensures that he can take a class at a nearby community college. Elwood hitchhikes there, but the man that gives him a lift, is pulled over and it turns out the car he's driving is stolen. This leads to the arrest of Elwood. The judge sentences Elwood to attend a reform school called Nickel Academy. He's transported there in handcuffs accompanied by two white boys. When he gets there, he's quite hopeful since it looks more like a school, instead of a prison. He's housed in a black student dormitory. The next day, he meets Desmond, who shows him around. He's told Nickel isn't a school, and he'll have to work, as he's put on yard work with Jamie, a Hispanic boy, who floats between the white and black campus. He gets advice to stay out of trouble, so he can be freed quickly, but when he sees a boy being bullied, called Corey, he steps in. In the middle of the night, the four boys are taken from their beds by Maynard Spencer, the superintendent, and Earl, to the White House for a beating. He wakes up in the school infirmary, where he has to stay for two weeks for his legs and back to heal. His best friend, Turner, eats soap powder, which makes him sick, so he can visit him. He tells his friend to avoid conflict. But Elwood has high morals, and expects the same from other people. His scars show otherwise though, and he's so ashamed that he doesn't even tell his grandmother about what happened when she visits. When he returns to campus, Turner gets him a new task, community service. Elwood and Turner leave campus in a van with a white 20-year-old boy called Harper. They sell goods meant for the black boys at Nickel and sell them to local businessmen. Harper gives the money to Superintendent Spencer and his boss, Director Hardy. Harper leaves Turner and Elwood at the home of a board member to paint his gazebo. Elwood makes notes on everything they do, at night. There's a yearly boxing match between the best black and white boxer. 
This year the black boxer is an immensely large bully called Griff. Superintendent Spencer instructs him to make sure to lose the fight, and faking a knockout in the third and final round. But he wins the fight, telling Spencer he lost track of the rounds thinking there was another one. That night Spencer and Earl seize him, chain him and beat him to death. The boys try believing the story that he was able to escape, but years later his body will be found in the secret cemetery. The students are put to work on a Christmas festival, designed to attract tourists. When the staff lunches there, Jamie poisons Earl's drink, hoping this will kill him. But Earl lives and no one even knows of this attempt. In the 70s, Elwood has a girlfriend and works for a moving company in New York. He gets his own van and launches his own company, Ace Moving, in hindsight realizing that he named it after the highest achievement at Nickel. Back in the 1960s Elwood is being frustrated by the school since it seems to be completely arbitrary and unfair. When his grandmother tells him the lawyer that was supposed to help him, left with all the money, he resolves to bring to light everything going on in Nickel, and have it closed down. In the 80s, Elwood, now the owner of a successful moving company, meets Chicky Pete, a fellow student at Nickel back in the day. They go to a bar, and Elwood mentions how damaged the boys from Nickel turned out. Chicky Pete is fresh out of rehab and has no job or place to live. Elwood is successful in work, but struggles in relationships and is still unmarried. Chicky Pete asks Elwood for a job but Elwood throws Chicky Pete's contact information away on the cab ride home. In the 1960s, Spencer is briefed that an inspection is imminent, and all the boys are instructed to fix up Nickel and hide its secrets. Elwood plans to give his notebook, filled with the story, to one of the inspectors, although Turner tries to persuade him otherwise. Elwood wants to do what's right. On inspection day, Elwood is sent on an errand so he can't hand his notebook over, and Turner gives in and tells him he'll do it. When Elwood is back, Turner tells him he handed it to an inspector as he was leaving by car. A few nights later, Spencer and his new assistant Hennepin, come for Elwood and beat him in the White House. In the 2000s, Elwood gets to know his wife Millie at a fancy restaurant in Harlem, imagining that same neighborhood many years ago, and how run down it was back then. In the 1960s, Elwood is locked in a dark room, in solitary confinement, being kept there for weeks, with hardly any food and regular beatings. One night, Turner comes for him, saying they heard Spencer was planning on killing him, like they did Griff. They run away together, with bikes they found in one of the houses they cleared out during community service. They ride through night and day, in an attempt to reach Tallahassee. Turner and Elwood are close when they see a white van pull up beside them, the nickel van. The boys run across a field as they get shot it, and Elwood is shot, as he falls to his death with arms outstretched. Turner runs leaving behind his best friend, Elwood. In 2014, Turner, who took his best friend's identity after the escape, tells his wife Millie the whole story. He tells her about Nickel and reveals that his name is Jack Turner. They cry together, and Millie says she'll support him in his healing after this traumatic experience. The next day, Turner flies to Tallahassee for a hearing where Nickel boys will testify about their time there. Turner is the only black person testifying. He plans to tell it all. Before the hearing, he goes to have lunch in the restaurant at the hotel he's staying, which is called the Radisson, after it changed name from the Richmond Hotel. Turner is unaware of it, but this is the same restaurant where young Elwood sat in the kitchen waiting on his grandmother and dreaming of one day seeing a black man being served in the dining room. If you'd like to make a suggestion about what book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.